Okay, so welcome back to the Racing Legend 1234 channel. Today we're going to start on a new, let's say, could be series. We'll see how it goes. But today we are doing, as you can see now, we are reviewing or looking into memes and posts mainly about the Imola Grand Prix at which was this weekend on the official or maybe official r slash formula one reddit so and at the start we can see a interesting poster talking about max verstappen's win and now he has surpassed Kimi Raikkonen for 16th all-time in career laps led with 1308 and he has also surpassed him in career grand prix victories which i think is a bit interesting but if you haven't watched the race, it'll be a little bit of spoilers maybe here. But I'm going to still... Well, you're looking correctly, so you'll be expecting them. And from what I saw from his... His performance today, I would say it was quite good. But... Hmm, I would... I would say... Leclerc was a bit unfortunate, but if he hadn't done the mistake, I'm not sure if he, he would have won. So, it's a bit like that, he would have won, maybe not. But I would say it's quite unfortunate for Leclerc. And then we have seen, this could be an interesting post too. Micro concussions cause major brain damage over time with porpoising and new stiffened suspension of the F1 world should know about it. So if you don't know what porpoising is, if the car goes like this, straight, normally if it's straight it just goes straight. But now when we have the ground effect and they haven't learned a lot about how it works and how to eliminate them, especially if you look at the Mercedes at certain videos, you'll see it's a lot, it goes and then because it's the ground effect it pushes the car down, but then it will hit the limit, the ground, then it'll automatically bounce off, then it'll go and bounce down, and then it'll bounce a bit up and down. And the problem with that is it can, as you see in this post, it can cause major brain damage, but also George Russell has spoken about that he has, he has gotten a bit of pain in his back, let's just say. So if Mercedes don't fix it, Hamilton and Russell might get damaged, but I'm not sure. A bit. Um, hmm. And then this could be. What's this statistic? Two podiums in a row at Imola for Lando, but now five podium finishes in the last five races in Italy for McLaren. Mugello 2020, the only race without a McLaren driver on the podium. Hmm. That's interesting. And if you don't remember Mugello 2020, it, the main thing you re we remember it from was, I think it was Albon's first podium and also there was a thing at the restart where further back a lot of people accelerated and the, to catch up and then they broke, great, but a few of the other people who further in the back who didn't see it thought it was that they could just go. And then there were just, I think it was Kevin Magnus and Antonio Giovinazzi and a few people were standing there and then it hit and then a ton of people crashed. Not good. Hmm. And then Jake Dennis with a very valid point regarding teams and version. Things you love to see, but this is soon so sketchy. One script from a mechanic and it's not pretty sight. The feeling if I want to change something bad to work happen. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that because if you can see here, all of them are just hanging on here. And this guy, he, he only has his hand there holding, holding on to. So, hmm. So, yeah, as he said, we might not see a change for the foreseeable future if not a big mistake happens. And hopefully he doesn't hit the car or she hits a car, one of the cars and dies or something. But that was why actually a little story with Racing Legend about why you have this five minute rule of when the mechanics are allowed to be on the circuit. 
because back in the olden days where safety wasn't a big thing, I think it was 80s or 70s, it was at the start, one of the guys, Ayrton Senna or somebody, he stalled it right after the formation lap, I think it was, and he couldn't start the car. So a mechanic ran and tried to start it, but the people with the lights had already started that. So he was just standing on the grid, and then he noticed that, so he went behind the car to try and hide. But the problem was, one of the guys who tried, who went, I think try to avoid another guy who stole or something. You'll have to look, and he went straight into pack into the back of this car with the mechanic, and the mechanic I think broke his leg and something else, but he didn't die thankfully. So that's a big problem that which is also in like most of these industries where death can happen is if somebody gets really injured or dies, is when usually a safety safety rule comes in. Because you can say it with Jules Bianchi, Ayrton Senna, because you don't think about it until it actually happens. Which is interesting, but also quite bad. Okay, so this is interesting. So Alex Jack, or how you pronounce it, and David Coulthard, we heard the Lewis Hamilton stuck behind Pierre Gasly. Let's listen. Here's Lewis Hamilton having a frustrating time of it. 14th position in the field for a seven-time world champion. That must be so difficult to accept. But earlier on, on the driver's parade, he did seem to have accepted where, where the team is. He knows that no ranting and raving is going to change the situation. And he's just accepted this is where Mercedes are for the moment. The moment they diagnose the problem getting rid of DRS. This is potentially the reason why we wouldn't be able to get rid of DRS at the moment. Hamilton might have to do it the old-fashioned way and just send it. Shakes for the move, but doesn't have the momentum. Daniel Ricciardo. So, that's interesting point of view because if you didn't know, Hamilton had a shocking qualifying and then had a not-so-good spring race, which led to him starting 14th in the race. Then he came up a few positions, had the quite fun, I think it was highest like B12, P11, somewhere around there. But then pit stops happened, Ocon nearly went into him, so he, so some problems happened. And what also happened was that that led to him also having he also had a really bad outlap, which meant he got behind Gasly and Alba, where he stayed the rest of the race. Because first, they didn't have any DRS, which made it overtaking really hard because he was on slicks. And if you at least go side by side and try and go behind, if yeah, side by side, the, off the racing line, there were, were quite a bit of wet puddles and wet circuit, so if he went there, he would have a really hard time trying to slow down actually going, so he was quite cautious there, and then when the, when the arrest came, finally, Pierre Gasly was stuck behind Albon, and Pierre Gasly was at the arrest, and, so, and Hamilton, which meant that they both had sort of the same advantage over each other, and because the Mercedes isn't as dominant as it was, led to him being stuck behind him for the whole of the race and thought the wolf was just saying oh sorry you have a bad car and things but we can debate over that because George Russell as you can maybe see he finished P4 he had a better start but it's debatable then we can look at the driving rate, driver ratings, which we can see. So we can look at the averages. So Verstappen, of course, got high because he sort of dominated, and the Norris got really high because he was very quite good today, yesterday, I should say, from recording this. So yeah, I can understand. And George Russell because he had a really good start and everything. Then Perez also was quite good. He was quite consistent. 
Bottas was also really good for pushing up to P5, but maybe he should have gotten a little bit of a higher rating. The Vettel 2 goal was really good. Yuki Sonoda, quite good. Magnussen, alright. Albon, I would say in the race, which was quite good. Stroll, I didn't see a lot of. Alonso couldn't do so much, he had to retire because of side pod panel broke off. Yeah, you could, he couldn't race. Leclerc, yeah, he had quite a good race until he sp him spinning, which led to him having to recover from P10 up to P6. So, you take, he had a quite good race. And before that, Otcom, all right, yeah, Gatsley, all right, Joe, okay, Sainz, well, you couldn't rate him for the actual race because he retired after like three corners because he got punted by, accidentally punted by the Giardo, who said sorry. We have Mick, I would say should be a bit lower down, maybe a bit lower down than Hamilton. Yeah, Ricciardo, yeah, of course, he had a very low and Latifi as usual, not so good. And if you want my opinion or prediction for next year, because Williams have stated that they don't fully need the backing of a pay driver and don't need it, can fix these big sponsors and money, I believe he'll get the kick. The average season rating, yeah, oh, uh, that's understandable. And then this, actually, we can talk about too. I'm an aerodynamicist, but I'm starting to become a sort of an engineer, maybe in a few years. I'm going to go to the university, but as you can see here, we have the floor of color sciences car. What I can't fully say a lot about this area than I make of it, but you probably see maybe what's a few of the F technical people like scarves and I, do, I don't have the I don't remember his name, but there's a guy who talks about who has talked about the energy recovery system and the drive chain, which was really interesting. So they might talk a lot about this. On the plan, I think a lot of the teams will be interested in looking at it because the Ferrari is so dominant or so quick, I should say. So, a group of Ratzenberg, the father of Roland, vis visited the paddock in Imola this weekend. The place was on the 1994. Yeah, so if you probably know the 1994 Imola Grand Prix because Ethan Senna died, but also this Rudolf Ratzenberger. Also died, which is very tragic that all of these deaths happened in Formula 1 and this wasn't that long ago, which is really bad, but if you want to not be, yeah, those are really bad and I'm really happy that F1 have made the cars a lot safer, so even though you have like very big impacts, you won't die, but you could still get a few. Broken bones. And here you can see, here you can see what I was talking about with Alonso within his, what's it called, his, his side pod things falling off his panels. Well, this could be an interesting discussion. Has, when do people like DRS? Croft spent the first half of the race complaining that there was no DRS, but honestly, I enjoyed racing so much more without it. Russell, I'm not a huge fan of, probably had one of the best overtakes of the race without DRS. If he had the option of just blasting past on the street, he would never have bothered to try that move. I just think DRS leading to Leads to boring overtakes, and I'd rather see less overtakes if ones we got were actually good. The people agree with Croft and want to see it on. I think that the arrest could be used, you could be a good thing, 
Maybe like around Monaco or something where overtaking is already really hard, but at like certain circuits where overtaking isn't that hard, where it's really wide, maybe like Silverstone or Melbourne maybe, where the circuits are really wide, I would say that DRS isn't as much needed. But as we saw in Imola, you couldn't overtake in any other place except the straight. So I think the arrest is still needed a little bit. Yeah, it's too powerful and overtake is not in modern press of a button. Yeah. This could be an interesting talking about. If you didn't know, this is the site of the new, uh, what's it called, the new 2022 Miami Re Grand Prix around the Hard Rock International Circuit, I believe it's called, it's called, I'm not fully sure, but you understand the gist. And what the person asks about this was, what's, what do you, what's your expectations my expectations with it if we just go to the layout is that if we if we look here you have at the start it's quite a long straight then you come into a right-hander which is quite long then a little s then a long corner then a few s's again you go on to this long full speed path you have the brake turn long corner then tight chicken onto here straight then you go sort of hairpin drop that so i would say this one is quite fast and quick flowing so I would predict even though it's smooth I would say a lot of porpoising will happen especially with the Mercedes and I think the teams which have controlled the porpoising the most will have an easier time because they don't lose as much speed so my expectations is Ferraris will be quick and I would say Mercedes will be a bit slower and as of overtaking I think it will be quite easy and there might be some heroics because of the types of corners. And then we can finish the video on a high by looking at Kimi Raikkonen and him starting his daughter, I think it was, her name is Rihanna, to start karting. And this is really good because as is the Iceman will have maybe a few ice cubes in motorsport because his son, I don't fully really remember the name of, I can put it up here. Now he, he is karting and I think going motorbike racing in Switzerland where he lives and his daughter has now started karting which is interesting to see but it's good that we're getting more females in racing because it's important to have this diversity not just ethnicities but also gender and on that note I think this is a good time to end so I hope you like this new format of video. If you liked it, hit the like button and subscribe down below and hit the bell icon so you'll know every time I post. But if you don't want to do that, I'll post every Tuesday at 8 at 6 o'clock in the afternoon Central European Summer Time or Central European Time, depending on when it is. So you'll just have to find what time zone is appropriate for you. Next video will be a circuit guide on the, on the hard on the Miami Grand Prix circuit for you to learn so you can learn it in Assetto Corsa and other games before it comes to the new F120 no yeah F120 2022 game just F122 game and if you want me to post videos on that just comment down below but until then I've been racing loaded you've been my amazing boss thank you for watching goodbye <laughs>